Hello friends, uh, welcome to Learners Planet. Friends, this is our second session for 3D figures. In the last session, we have discussed the basic and the formula related to pyramids, frustum, how to find out the curved surface area, total surface area and volume of all the this uh, 3D figures, right? So in this session, we are going to discuss some of the problems based on all these 3D figures. And you should revise the previous session before you come to this session because directly we will be taking the problems. Okay, so let's begin this one. Now let's try this problem. Here, a pyramid is based on a square whose side is 10 cm. Pyramid vertical height is 12 cm. Find curved surface area, total surface area and the volume of the pyramid. Now, uh, these figures are not at all given in the question that I have drawn for your reference. Here, this base is square, right? That means W and L, both of them are same and both of them are 10. Right? Now, this is the midpoint. Okay? From this point to this point, this angle is 90 degree. This complete width, that is this line, is actually 10. So, from this point to this point, it will be 5. Right? So, we can find out the slant height, that is this. So, that will be actually, this is 12, this is 5. That means, uh, we can apply Pythagoras theorem, so that will be 13, right? 5, 12 and 13, they, they are Pythagorean triplet, so the slant height will be 13, right? Now, the base area will be 10 into 10, that is 100, plus now we have the four triangles and the base of the triangle is 10 and height, that is if we just straight it like this, this way then this height that is 13 over here will be the height of this triangle right so this height is 13 that is altitude of this triangle is 13 right and what is the formula for area of the triangle that is half of base into altitude so half of base that is 10 into altitude that is 13 and there are four triangles like this so I'll multiply it by 4 Okay, so that is 13 into 226, uh, that is 260 plus 100, 360 uh, centimeter square will be the total surface area of this pyramid, right? If you wish to calculate the curved surface area, then you just have to take the uh, this uh, 260 uh, 261 part, that is, uh, you can leave this 100 because that is the area of the square base, okay? So curved surface area will be 260 total surface area will be 360, right? Now, you have to find out the volume of this pyramid so that I've, the formula I have already discussed, that is one third because this is the uh, figure that is not symmetric, that is this not vertical, that it has slant height. So, the volume will be 1 upon 3 base area into height. So, base area is what? Here it is 100 into height is what? 12, right? So, volume is 400 cubic centimeter. Okay, so that's pretty simple. As I have told you in the previous session also, no need to mug up any formula. You should be basic, uh, basically clear how to find out the area of the square, how to find out the area of a triangle. That's it. Nothing else is required. Okay, and for volume, it's the standard formula that uh, the base area into height will give you the volume of any 3D figure. Right, if the 3D figure is not symmetric then you need to that means if it is having the slant height then uh, you need to take one third otherwise you don't have to take this one third suppose for hexagonal pyramid or for cuboid for cube you don't have to do one third okay now let's see this question base of a pyramid is a regular hexagon of side 20 centimeter vertical height is 10 fine curve surface area and volume now this is a square pyramid this is a hexagonal pyramid and uh, base area that we can easily find out. In this case, it is, uh, if it is a rectangular base, then it will be length into breadth. If it is a square base, then side square, right? So, since it is a square pyramid, the base is square, so that's side square. But in this case, base area will be the area of this hexagon. Now, for an hexagon, uh, for hexagon, it's actually a combination of six equilateral triangles. So, the base area will be root 3 by 4 side square, that is 
this is 20 so that is 20 into 20 that that is the area of one triangle and in hexagon we can see there are six equilateral triangles right so that's into six So that is 600 root 3, that is the centimeter square, that is the base area. Now we have to find out the curved surface area. Now for curved surface area, base we know, right? This base we know, but and this height we know, right? This height, that is given as um, 10 centimeter, right? So this altitude we know, that is 10 centimeter. We have to find out this slant height. This slant height will be actually height of this triangle, right? And uh, and we know we need to know the length of this right so this is actually if you can visualize I have drawn the figure over here just look at carefully yeah this is the midpoint that you can observe from this point to this point this is the total length that I have marked over here right and from this point to this point this length will be actually this length, right? So this is what the altitude of one equilateral triangle, right? So we have to find out the altitude of this. So how do we find out? Area of this equilateral triangle will be, uh, one equilateral triangle will be root 3 by 4 into 20 into 20. And area of triangle can be find out by half of base into altitude. So base in is 20 and altitude we have to find out, right? So the altitude is 10 root 3. That means this length is 10 root 3. Okay. Now we can find out the slant height. So this is 10. This is uh, 10 root 3. So slant height will be 10 square plus 10 root 3 square. That means 300. So that is 400. And square root of this will be 20. So slant height is 20. Right. Now this slant height is actually height of this triangle. Right now we can find out the area of this triangle that is half of base base is actually 20 that is the side of this hexagon so half of base into altitude we have already find uh, found out that is 20 okay so this is the uh, surface area of one triangle and this sort of six triangles are, are there on this base on this hexagonal base so I multiplied by 6 right so that's 1200 centimeter square so that will be the area of that or we can say curved surface area of this hexagonal pyramid right so uh, similarly we can find out the volume also as i've already discussed volume will be 1 upon 3 base area base area will be this uh, 600 root 3 we have already find found out so that's uh, 1 upon 3 base area into height of this is 10 centimeter so this can be calculated easily okay Okay, I hope you are clear. Now, we have a tetrahedron over here. Length of each side of the tetrahedron is 12 cm. We have to find its volume. So, first of all, let's uh, try to derive the formula for volume of a tetrahedron. Now, tetrahedron is a combination of four equilateral triangles, right? Three triangles and one triangle at the base. So, all of them are congruent to each other. That means there are four equilateral triangles right now we just try to derive the formula for uh, curved surface area or we can say surface area and uh, volume right now surface area will be very simple if you have to find out the curved surface area then there are three equilateral triangles each equilateral triangle will be having the area as root 3 by 4 side square and uh, if you have to find out the curved surface area multiply it by 3 if you have to find out the total surface area multiply it by 4 so that's the total surface area right now we have to find out the volume of this now to find out the volume just observe it carefully how do we find out now this is a right angle triangle okay this is the height of this uh, tetrahedron. I write it H. This is actually circumcenter. Okay, circumcenter of this triangle. 
this is equidistant from all the three vertices so this is the circumcenter of this triangle and this is the slant height or we can say side of the triangle so that's given to us maybe we assume it to be l already it is given but to derive the formula i assume it to be l right now this length that is actually circum radius of this triangle now how do we find out the circum radius that we have already discussed in the basic sessions of geometry see for uh, area of any triangle any equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 a square that is side square right and in terms of circum radius it is a cube by 4 r that is the area of an equilateral triangle in terms of circum radius where r is the circum radius right so actually r is a by root 3 that is side by root 3 that is circum radius right so here the side is actually L. So, L uh, R is L by root 3. Okay. So, this is L. This is L by root 3 and this is H. Now, all of them will form Pythagorean. Uh, they will be in Pythagorean. We, will, we can use Pythagoras theorem to find out H. Right. So, H square plus L square by 3 is equal to L square. Right. So, h square is equal to l square minus l square by 3. So, I can say 2 by 3 l square, right? So, h will be root 2 by 3 l, okay? Now, we have to find out the volume. So, volume is the base area into height. Base area is what? Root 3 by 4 l square into height. We have already found out. That's so i take everything under square root so that's 3 if it goes into the square root it will be 16 then this is 2 and this is 3 and i'm sorry i forgot to do one third because this is slant height so one third of the base area into height right so, if this 3 goes inside, it will be 1 upon 9. So, that is a cube by root 72, right? That is the volume of this tetrahedron, okay? a cube or maybe l cube. Now, here l, in particularly this question, l is 12 centimeter. That is the side of the tetrahedron. So, just put up 12 into 12 into 12 by root 72 and just solve it out. You will be getting the answer right you can learn the formula directly that is l cube by root 72 and i have uh, shown here the derivation of this formula also so basically you should be conceptually clear how the formula is getting derived right so if there is a, a change in the shape then also you you feel comfortable okay now we have this question a right circular cone is separated into solids of volume V1, V2, V3 by two parallel lines to the base which also trisect the altitude then a ratio of V1, V2, V3. Uh, I have drawn the diagram over here. These are the two parallel lines and uh, the height is equal, right? This point, that means this is one third, this is one third and this is one third right now we have already discussed in our basic session session of the previous session that this triangle will be similar to this triangle and this triangle that means o p q p dash q dash and o dash r dash right triangle o p q is similar to triangle o p dash q dash and triangle o dash o o dash r dash right so the three triangles that you can see over here will all, all of them will be similar to each other right now what is happening since height is getting one third this is the total height i supposed to be h so this height will be one third now if height is getting one third r will also be one third if this is r then it will be r by three right height is one third r is one third that means the volume will be one upon 27 right of the entire volume that means the volume of this particular portion that is the smaller cone will be 1 upon 27 of the volume of the entire cone right because r is one third h is one third you can see it okay so that is 3 
square 9 into 3, 127. This is actually constant figure, so that's not at all required to make the calculation. So if height is one third, radius is one third, the volume will be 1 by 27, right? Now this is of the first, this one, right? So that is actually V1. Now V2, this figure from, that means this first term part. Now to find out the volume of this first term part, I can find out the area, I'm sorry, volume of this cone, then I can deduct the volume of this smaller cone. Volume of the smaller cone we already know that is V by 27. Now we can find out the volume of this bigger cone. Now height is actually 2 third. This is H by 3, this is H by 3, right? So height is 2 third and radius will also be 2 third. So the volume will be 8 by 27 of the total volume, right? Now we have to find out the volume of this portion only. So from the entire 8 by 27, if we deduct this one, we will be getting the volume of this one. So from 8 by 27, I deduct 1 by 27. So the volume of this portion will be 7 by 27, right? Now what? Uh, the third portion, so that is from this entire volume, if I deduct the volume of this uh, this cone, then I can get the volume of this one, right? Now the entire volume is V minus volume of this we have already calculated, that is 8 by 27 of V. So precisely volume of this portion is 27 minus 8, that is 19 by 27 V, right? So that's V3. So V1 is to V2 is to V3 will be 1 is to 7 is to 19, right? So it's a very simple problem that you can do it very easily if you are conceptually clear that all the three triangles will be similar to each other. That means their height and the ratio will be in proportion, right? Height of the three triangles and ratio of, I'm sorry, radius of the three triangles will be in proportion, right? That is R, okay? I hope you are clear. Okay, here side of the triangle, uh, this radius of the triangle, I mean side of this triangle, right? Now let's take the next question. Here, the water of a river flows at 2 km per hour, which is 3 meter deep and 40 meter broad. How much of the water flow into the sea in one minute? Now see this, uh, this is kind of a river. Here, depth is 3 meter, so this is 3 meter. This is 40 meter and this 2 kilometer per hour is nothing but the length of, uh, we can say water, length of the water is nothing but actually the water that is flowing in 1 hour, right? So in 1 hour, the length, I assume the length will be, this length will be actually 1 kilometer, right? Now we know this, we know this and we know this. This is the length of the water in one kilometer that is the uh, this distance water is covering in one kilometer it's uh, one hour is two kilometer right so that's two kilometer okay so in one hour the volume will be what this into this into this so three into forty into two this is two kilometer is in meter and I'll convert it into meters, so it's 2,000 meter. So that is the 2, 4, 8, 3, 24, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 meter cube. That is the volume in 1 hour, right? Now we have to find out the volume in 1 minute. So what I will do, I will divide it by 60. Volume in 1 hour, so 2, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0 by 60. So that's 4,000 meter cube. That will be the volume in one minute. Okay, so that was pretty simple. I hope you are clear. So in the next session, I'll be taking more problems based on um, this uh, 3D figures. Do revise this session and the previous one. I'll see you in the next session once again. Bye-bye.